Hey everybody, okay, so today we're gonna talk about beating the bloat. I'm talking belly bloat. And um, we're gonna talk natural ways to beat belly bloat. I hope you can read this. I'm trying to keep myself on track, so I'm writing a lot. <laughs> but um, I, I'm gonna re reserve another video this week to ways, if this is not working for you or someone in your family, um, there are supplements that you can take that are safe that can help you if something is going on inside of you, help you digest your food better and hopefully will help you with your bloating. But that's kind of what I do now with my nutritional therapy. And I'll mention that at the end of, uh, if you've got issues that are just not going away, you may wanna consult with me and maybe we need to work together one-on-one -on -one because um, you might need more customization with your meal plans, okay? But in general, naturally, okay, remember my video on um, on parasympathetic, getting into parasympathetic state, which is your, whoops, I didn't put it up there, but your parasympathetic state is your rest and relaxation state. You must, and I said this in that video, you must be in parasympathetic to properly digest your food. If you're a little wound up, you may digest some of it, but you probably won't digest all of it. And it's possible that you will feel bloating just from that. So please, you've got to like say grace or say what you're grateful for. Sit down, turn off the TV, put your phone away, unplug, calm yourself down, whatever works for you before you eat your meal. I know that's probably not gonna happen for every meal, but I'm just asking you to be conscious and mindful of that. It is that important for digesting your food. You guys, our food is our fuel. If we are not digesting it, we are not gonna reach optimal health because we're not nourishing our body, we're not nourishing our cells. And you guys, what's so amazing about our bodies is we need to nourish our cells because you can pretty much regenerate. Your cells are constantly dying off and, and um, dying off and then there's new ones regenerated. If you, st so that's what's so amazing. If you've been eating terrible for years, but you really get on a good, um, a good clean eating plan, whatever it is, but it's good, you're getting rid of sugar, you're getting rid of gluten. When your cells are regenerating, they are regenerating with that fuel, which is the medicine, it's food, food is medicine. It regenerates in your body and things start to heal. It's amazing. So you want to digest your food properly, okay? Parasympathetic state, is the only state that you can be assured that you're gonna digest your food when you're in a healthy state. Because if you've got other things messed up, obviously parasympathetic isn't always going to work. So, but it's still part of the puzzle. So let's hope that's all it is, but I'm guessing it probably isn't all of it because of the foods we've been eating for so long, okay? But, all right, we're gonna start with calming down. I can't tell you how important it is and chewing and chewing your food. You've got to chew, chew, chew. Um, that's that, I mean, that should have lots of exclamation points behind it. Um, you want to break your food down. Your digestion starts actually in your mouth. It starts on your tongue. Your tongue has um, an enzyme called amylase, which starts to break down your carbohydrates right away. And so you need, you want to, it starts in your tongue and then you swallow your food and then it goes into your stomach and that's another important spot for digestion is your, stu is your uh, stomach, okay? But everything gets absorbed in your small intestines. So that's important to know because as I talk through this, it starts in your mouth, it actually starts in your brain because it hits your tongue and your brain goes, ooh, there's food and it lets go of the enzyme amylase to start breaking down your carbohydrates swallow the food into your stomach, and that's where your stomach acid is supposed to break down your food even further. And then in your small intestines, we have more enzymes to break down your, your fats and proteins um, further, but also that's where you start to absorb things. But there's lots of problems in every step there. So when you don't chew your food, you're leaving big particles. Your body has trouble with those big particles. It doesn't properly digest them. We, and especially if you're not chewing your food and then let's say it hits your stomach and you do not produce enough stomach acid 
to break that food down further. Then it goes into your small intestine as these big particles that were not broken down and you're gonna bloat. And there's probably more problems going on. That's for another video because I could totally overwhelm you. <laughs> Those are the things we dive into one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so that I don't expect you to count your chews. However, it's not a bad idea um, to take it slow and to really properly just chew to really get it broken down. Okay, great thing to teach your kids now. These first two steps the younger you can start this practice, the better your kids are gonna fare as they get older, okay? So those are two really natural practices that I would so get in the habit of, okay? Very important pieces of the puzzle. All right, you've probably heard this from me before or somewhere else, but probiotic-rich foods. Uh, especially if you're not into supplements, I do think we all should be on a probiotic. However, eating probiotic-rich foods is the natural way they flourish and they nourish the cells in your small intestine, help strengthen, they, they do all that by increasing the good bacteria in your intestines, which is important so they fight off the bad bacteria and get that out of there. But you need a jungle down there, you do. You really need a lot of different strains. So like I'm a big sauerkraut person. This is my favorite sauerkraut right now because it has, um, this is, red because it's red beet and cabbage sauerkraut and it's wild brine. Uh, I've seen this in a lot of stores, fermented foods. Um, it's my favorite right now because beets help you break down your fats and um, help increase your bile, which helps break down your fat. And I think I'm having some trouble there because of stress. And of course I told you I'd tell you my story and I haven't yet. But um, so I'm doing that, but regular sauerkraut, if you're doing dairy, Guys, dairy is one of the most inflammatory foods, so if you bloat a lot, that's I get a little nervous, but if you're doing dairy like kefirs and, and yogurts, you gotta look for non-sugared yogurts though and non-sugar uh, kefirs, but there are also lots of, pro, lots of good bacteria in those, okay? I think sauerkraut is the easiest thing to do, one of the healthiest things that you can do as well, and it can go on anything. And if you hate it, that's an issue that we need to talk about. But <laughs> I hope you will try. Try, there's tons of different flavors. Kimchi is another one. But they really help populate the good bacteria in your gut. And then number four is always hydrate. You guys, our, every cell in our body needs water. It does, you got to take this seriously. I can't help, I can't express it enough. You've gotta drink, drink, drink. And water, water, water. Don't be trying all these foofy things. You gotta figure that out. It's so important to help proper digestion. If you're dehydrated, you are not. Every enzyme, every, everything needs water to work properly. So if you don't have it, you're just, everything's kinda down, down the drain, okay? Hydrate. Okay, this is a really natural way, and this is something that's been helping me a lot, and you've heard me already talk about this, but herbal teas, collagen, and apple cider vinegar, and lemon. These are great natural things that you can do to help the bloat, to help your body digest, to help your body um, stimulate the, um, the acids that you might be lacking. If you lead a very stressful life, and you don't get a lot of sleep, this is all me, it's possible, and there's other issues, there's other reasons why you may not have enough stomach acid, but those are very, uh, those uh, stress and busyness and um, not eating very well are reasons why your stomach acid may be low, and these type of things help stimulate that stomach acid, which helps break down your food in your stomach. Remember, if your food doesn't break down, your, break down uh, in your stomach, it is going into your small intestine as these big, big particles which causes that bloat. So prior to the small intestine, we've gotta get food digesting better in your stomach. And if it's not, it could be because you have low stomach acid. And very natural ways, very natural ways. So um, my favorite herbal tea for digestion, it doesn't taste awesome is my roasted dandelion root tea. Now I've showed you my throat coat tea, which I love, that helps too. But when I'm really, after a meal, if I'm really struggling, really struggling for some reason, cause again, I'm having some issues, 
Um, this is amazing for me. This dandelion root is the herb, okay? That's the name. And this is that traditional medicinals. Um, that dandelion root helps just um, settle everything down and really gives me relief. So highly recommend having this in your medicine cabinet. Um, did you know that Trader Joe's is, I think it's one of the better prices. If you don't make your own bone broth, this is collagen is what we're talking about here. Collagen, again, great for helping that stomach lining and your intestinal lining. Um, uh, this is their Trader Joe's organic. They have beef and chicken bone broth. I think it's like $2.99 for this. I think, gosh, I should have looked but I get a lot of my bone broth there. I try to make my own, but you guys, every recipe that I have on your meal plan that is uh, calls for um, chicken stock or something, I actually use bone broth now. And um, I'm using it because I think I've got some um, gut issues and um, it just helps repair. It's one of those um, collagen can help repair and uh, I'll do anything I can right now. And then my collagen powder, I usually use Perfect Keto, but I actually tried Bulletproof just recently, Bulletproof. This is what I use in my smoothies. I cannot do dairy right now, so I can't even do whey. It makes me bloat right away. Never did before, but it does now because I've figured it out with an elimination diet. I can do collagen and I know it's flourishing and helping nourish um, my stomach lining and my intestines. So. Those are some natural things. Lemon and apple cider vinegar. So before a meal, you would kind of like take shots of those because they help stimulate your stomach acid. That is, that is a really important thing. Now, some people take it after um, their meal. I don't think it helps as much after, but it can, especially if you're bloating, it can help. But if you take it before, lemon, they can be squeezed into water or just shots of these, you guys, can really help stimulate that stomach acid so it can help further break down your food, okay? Again, natural ways, it may not work for everybody, but I would rather you try natural first before we start talking supplements. But supplements are okay. Your body may just be saying, listen, I'm really broken and I need some, I need some help right now, um, just for short term, and that's where supplements can come in. I used to never do supplements, but actually I really believe in their healing power now, okay? So another video, I'm gonna talk about those. And then the last one, which is the hardest one, but it's, it's, it's what I'm doing right now, eliminating the problematic foods. You guys, you may have to go one by one, really journal. If you're really struggling with bloating or even gas, anything, you want to try to pinpoint what the foods are. Again, I can help you with this working one-on-one -on -one a lot easier. Um, but um, it could be dairy, it could be eggs. What are some, I mean, it could be gluten. Sugar is the most inflammatory food. Um, it could be refined grains, which is gluten, but breads, pastas, pastries, that kind of stuff. So I read a really interesting article that if you, I have given up gluten for a long time. I, I, I have, but, but I was never sensitive to it. However, I still don't believe it, we need it. It's not, it's not something that is natural to our body, so I gave it up. But once in a while when I go out, I'll have some. Holy moly, I've been having huge reactions to it recently when I do eat it. And um, I read an article just, just today that said when you've given it up for a long time, um, your body stops producing like this mucus in your intestines that helps us break down Gluten, our body is so smart. Gluten is not natural, but our body's like, if you're gonna eat gluten, I'll produce something to help break it down a little bit more. But you stop, if you're not eating gluten, it stops. Well, guess what? I mean, I had some gluten, and I don't have that mucus to help break it down more. Oh my gosh, just awful diarrhea, cramping. Um, that's so interesting to me. That's even more of a reason not to eat gluten again, because my body is so used to not having it and it's not natural, and then I have those reactions? No way, <laughs> no way. But we've gotta stay away from those inflammatory foods. An elimination diet can be very hard, but what, you, what I'm suggesting you do is really pay attention when you're eating and journal what you're eating. This is where food journal is very helpful. What's your reaction? Can you pinpoint maybe what food it is? If you're doing this challenge, but you know there's something on the meal plan that is, is making you bloat, we should talk because you shouldn't be eating it. We gotta find a substitution. So I hope that all helps. I'm here for you. That's what I wanna do is help you um, reach out, okay? But let's try some of these natural 
ways to get rid of belly bloat and let me know how it goes. Okay, bye guys.